Thank you guys so much for all the response to the community post about me being unmotivated. I'm back again now. I'm here to tell you about what I'm playing on my PlayStation 5 right now. And I have written down Valkyrie Elysium, guys. It's a game that is by Square Enix. I bought it on sale now in Christmas. So it was actually my Christmas game when I played the entire holidays. I know that there are a lot of mixed reviews on Valkyrie Elysium. I somewhat get what they're saying the game is sort of not a high budget game not a low budget game but something weird in between and it is not very complicated but it's sort of simple the thing is it is an action hack and slash where you play this valkyrie you are sent down to midgar by odin and you are fighting a lot of enemies and you do some quests and the game is structured to be mission based sort of you have this hub area where there's actually not much to do and then you have this mission list where you can also enter side quests Excellent explanation. Now this was released by Square Enix, like I said, three months ago and it went under everyone's radar. I know a Happy Console Gamer made a video about it, but back then I did not open my eyes to this game at all. It's something that just happened later when I was like, yeah, that game have seen it but never really cared but then it was on sale picked it up i am not regretting anything i am enjoying the game it is just straightforward hack and slash set in norse mythology and <laughs> there's so many games right now that are set in norse mythology what is up with that now in valkyrie elysium you have ein harrier warriors in Harriard, and there are plenty of elemental skills that you can pop by pressing R1 and R2 also to summon the Ain Harriers. Ain Harrier on, and they are summonable warriors. I really like the combat in this game. It is solid, it is smooth, and addicting. It's actually addicting, guys. Now, don't go into this game thinking it's gonna be the biggest and the best game in the world. It's a sort of simple game, but I can absolutely stand behind it if you find it on sale. This is that type of game. I guess from the reviews that I've seen that it can be hit and it can be a miss for some people. Some people are slaughtering this game in the review saying it is the most boring game, the most repetitive game. Now, I don't always mind a game being repetitive. It's the way that it is repetitive that can be annoying for me. If I am loving what I'm doing and it is apparently repetitive, I can often not mind that. And this is the type of game where I did not find it to be boring or extremely repetitive. I mean, since I have played it the entire holidays and I've not put it away. It also has several different weapons that you can change by using the d-pad there. And you can also pop potions if that is something that you need to do. So yeah, Valkyrie Elysium uh, went under my ra ra radar. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, last time that I spoke about a game that went under a radar, that was the Smurfs game. And guess what? Now my neighbor is playing that game like crazy. Even some people like through business emails has said, no, I'm interested in the Smurfs game. I have recruited so many people to that game. And that was definitely a game that I didn't know about, that went under every radar in the world. Now, this game could probably be like considered a hidden gem later. I thought I would show you a lot of gameplay of this game and highly recommend it. Maybe not for the full price, maybe not. But if it is on sale, I am saying yes, definitely. Actually, guys, I saw this game first when I was at that Spill Expo, the vlog where I went down to this gaming convention, whatever. I have a video of that. And I held it up, making my B-roll around the uh, venue. And I was like, this looks interesting, you know? And then when I went to YouTube to look up some reviews, then I saw, yeah, Happy Console Gamer did make a review of that. But it just didn't click with me back then. Now I'm saying you, Valkyrie Elysium. I am enjoying this game. It is very, very cute. The graphics are good. Performance is good. I mean, this is the PlayStation 5 after all. It's not a Switch. <laughs> uh, highly recommend that. Now, the other game that I am playing right now upstairs 
is Soul Hackers 2. And this is the sequel, apparently, since it's Soul Hackers 2 from a very old game called Soul Hackers. I've never played. But the thing is, this is taking a lot of assets from the Shin Megami Tensei series and the Persona series. A lot of assets. All the demons that you know from Shin Megami Tensei are in Soul Hackers 2. Same developer, obviously. <laughs> Not sure about the world and the setting and the lore, if that is the same, but the thing is, a lot of assets are from Shin Megami Tensei. Now, do you guys remember Shin Megami Tensei 5? Such a good game and I cannot find my cartridge for that game. I have that game in physical, in theory, but it's not in its cover and I've lost it. I know I lent it away, but I know also that I got it back, that sort of thing. Has that ever happened to you? I just cannot find that cartridge. And I'm thinking sometimes I want to go back to Shin Megami Tensei 5 because I had such a nice feeling with the game because it was a somewhat harder game and I did not download the easier mode thing that you could eventually do with Shin Megami Tensei 5. Now, Soul Hackers 2, yeah, I'm playing on easy. You know me. But I could say the same thing about Soul Hackers 2. Is some reviews are slaughtering the game, saying it's terrible, low budget, and the dungeons are unimaginable, repetitive, and bland and boring. Yeah, the dungeons are actually, they could have been better. I mean, especially in that Axis area, those dungeons. But the thing is, this game reminds me of Shin Megami Tensei with the turn-based battles and the elemental weaknesses that you have to discover with this question marks stuff. It's so similar. Your summoners, they have demons attached to them. You can attach demons. Also, you can recruit demons just like you do in Shin Megami Tensei. But otherwise, I think the gameplay reminds me of Crystar. You know, with this dungeon crawlery formula where you have this overlay map and you have to figure out all the corners of the entire map sort of thing. And some light puzzles, some of them are actually tricky too. And you use these maps and stuff to navigate through these dungeons. And I like a good dungeon crawler and figuring out things on my own. This game is scratching that itch. I am absolutely having a fun time in Soul Hackers 2. Again, I bought this on sale. Again, I guess I could say it has its flaws, just like any other game, I guess. So maybe it's not worth a full price. It was 50% off, just like Valkyrie Elysium. And at that price range, they are definitely worth it. I am enjoying Soul Hackers too. I am enjoying the story, though oftentimes in games like these, the story starts out so good. And then you have this dragging the story along sort of sequence in the middle of the game. And then things picks up again. It's that sort of story. So Valkyrie Elysium and Soul Hackers 2. I am playing this on my PlayStation 5 and I am enjoying the heck out of them. I am actually remote playing PlayStation 5 in my bed. I'm treating this that I'm holding in my hands now as, as a Switch sort of thing. But I am playing PlayStation 5 handheld. Which brings me to this thing that I showed in a video that I said I would talk about later. No, well, I guess now it's later. And it is the Razer Kishi. I bought it. And it is an attachment sort of controller that you put onto an old broken phone. This is my old broken phone. I don't even use it because my real phone is over here somewhere. There it went. But yeah, an old phone working perfectly. I am playing PlayStation 5 in any position, in bed, on the couch, anywhere. At home, that is, because it goes over the local network. It's a local thing, whatever. I thought I would mention that also, but that is exciting. And that is the way that I'm playing my PlayStation 5 right now, because I sit awkwardly in the living room, I don't know. I just prefer handheld gaming. And here's my Switch. I just got the newest Skull & Co grip. This is the grip case. I still have a code a discount code for them. I still have that up. They are absolutely still, of course, the best grips for my Switch. I cannot live without them. Still recommending that. 
And I also think I still have the discount code for these necklaces. Look in the description box, I have that stuff down there. Now that is, so yeah, that was all I played on my PlayStation 5 recently. Thank you so much for having me back. And I really appreciate all of your comments. Your support is second to none. I will see you later.